Hello and welcome back to our roster and schedule reveals for our FCS Dynasty. This is reveal number 10. After this, all we have left is UC Davis and VMI. Let's get into a coach quote, expectations for the team, and thoughts on the roster from first year head coach Noah Regeer. He says, I'm excited on this year's roster with how we got two really great quarterbacks and a surprising fullback. I believe we have the talent this year not only to go to a bowl game, but to be better than we were last year and go 7-5. and five. Since this is my first year as Southern Utah's head coach, it's going to be a challenge to get this team successful, but I'm up for anything. I'm a little worried about the defense because last season we were 6-6, six and six, and losing 6 games and also your bowl game to have a losing record is bad. I'm actually happy we lost our bowl game because it makes it so much better if we can win this year with these group of guys. This team will surprise a lot of people and everyone will be talking about Southern Utah. Now it's time to go win some games for the Thunderbird fans. Now I'm not sure if I agree with him being excited that they lost <laughs> their bowl game, um, but definitely a lot of room for improvement here for the Thunderbirds in year number two, year one for head coach Noah Regeer. Let's take a look at his Thunderbird roster and see what they got working for him. Sophomore quarterback Owen Gregory, 6'2", 208 pounds. He's coming in with an 82 overall. He had a rough season in year one. Uh, only nine touchdown passes, 21 interceptions. Uh, he did pretty good on the ground, I guess. I mean, 301 yards on the ground, five touchdowns. So he was not the best. <laughs> not the best quarterback in year one. Uh, but definitely a lot of room to go up for him. Um, but he's going to have some competition from Nicholas Hall, who is a freshman quarterback coming in. Now, he is 5'9", 168 pounds, but Nicholas Hall is a four-star recruit and has an 82 overall, so he is dead even with Owen Gregory. And head coach Noah Regeer is going to be splitting uh, formations with these quarterbacks. So both of them are going to get playing time, and they're both dynamic players. Uh, Gregory just has... Um, <laughs> some issues that need to be fixed from year number one. I know he's a left-handed quarterback, and I've had some issues with left-handed quarterbacks in this series so far, but I am trying to correct that, folks. On to halfback, Cameron Matthews, 82 overall as well, 5'11", 187 pounds. He had a pretty good year last season, 194 carries, 1,197 yards, 10 touchdowns, Hit a 6.1 yard average, a long of 90, 515 yards after contact, 10 20 plus yard runs, 56 broken tackles, but he fumbled the football seven times. Now, he didn't really do a whole lot in the receiving game, just 14 catches, 228 yards, and two touchdowns. And uh, he had some kick returns on the year, 479 yards, no touchdowns, as long as 43. And he has actually been taken off the kick return by the head coach so we will not be seeing Cameron Matthews returning any kicks this coming season now fullback Brandon Lee sophomore 92 overall he's 6'2 240 pounds just a beast of a man really hard to take down he had 652 yards rushing last season 5.3 yard average 13 touchdowns that led the team by three over Matthews but his longest run was only 31 yards so we need a little bit more explosiveness out of Brandon Lee here in his sophomore season he did have 310 of his 652 yards after contact 520 plus yard runs 25 broken tackles he also fumbled the ball quite a bit four fumbles on the season and he had 20 catches 259 yards one touchdown last year long of 67 and three drops so one of the best fullbacks in the country in Brandon Lee. Moving on to the receiving core, Jaquan Freeman, sophomore, 82 overall, 6'4", 218 pounds. Not a big impact last year, just one touchdown from Jaquan Freeman. It doesn't help that his quarterback couldn't get the ball to him, but 29 catches, 492 yards, one score, and six drops. Prince McCutcheon, the number two wide receiver, 6'4", 193 pounds, so both similar builds. Uh, Jaquan Freeman just has 25 pounds on McCutcheon, and McCutcheon has a 76 overall. He had 22 catches last season, led the team in yards with 535. He had four touchdowns, a long of 63. He averaged 24.3 yards per catch, and he had five drops. I believe he also fumbled twice. 
and it was right by the end zone as well. And moving on to offensive line, Brandon Red, sophomore guard, 84 overall. He had a really great season, 51 pancakes, one sack allowed. So really strong right guard here for Southern Utah. He was first team all pack 10. And moving on to the defense, uh, we've got Jericho Stevens, sophomore defensive end. He had a really good year, 34 tackles, uh, 12 for a loss, six sacks. Nothing too crazy. It's three pass deflections, forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Uh, but a pretty good, solid season for him in his freshman year. Moving to the interior side of the offensive lineman, Adam Joseph, 27 tackles, 15 for a loss, six sacks. So both of these defensive linemen with six sacks last season. Joseph also had a pass deflection and a forced fumble. And both of these players had 85 overalls. So pretty solid defensive line here for Southern Utah in year two. Moving on to middle linebacker, Logan Tyler. He is a JUCO transfer. He's got an 82 overall. Looking forward to uh, seeing him on the field. 6'2", 230 pounds. He's a beast. And he'll be roaming the middle of that defense. Moving on to corner, C.J. Moreland. He was a meme last season. Not good whatsoever. He was second in tackles on the team with 37. Two for a loss, one sack, two picks, eight pass deflections, and that is it. He got burnt early and often in pretty much every single game. There was a touchdown scored on him at least once or twice a game. So he needs to improve drastically for the secondary to be great. And free safety, Emmanuel Wise, 70 overall. He was a three-star recruit coming out of high school. He's 5'8". And 185 pounds, so only four pounds heavier than CJ Moreland. Moreland, of course, with an 82 overall. So Emmanuel Wise shores up the secondary a little bit. And sophomore safety, Bryce King, final player of the defense, 84 overall. He had 36 tackles, one for loss, and three picks last season. He also had two forced fumbles and two pass deflections. Let's get into the schedule, folks. Week number two, game one. They'll be traveling to take on Conference USA opponent Weber State. That might be an interesting game. I'm not sure about Weber State. I don't think we've seen them in this dynasty yet. Week three, they'll be hosting the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions out of the SEC. And then they start their Pac-10 play with several uh, easier games. Idaho State, Sacramento State, and Northern Arizona. Those are all winnable games here for the Thunderbirds. And then week eight, they'll be hosting the Eastern Washington Eagles, who are definitely a force to be reckoned with here in the Pac-10 going forward. And then look at this, a four game stretch. Subscriber, 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 subscriber. That is gonna be the nastiest part of this schedule. And I don't know if Southern Utah is gonna have a chance at Cal Poly or UC Davis, but they got a shot against San Diego and Northern Colorado, I believe. After the pounding they're going to be taking at the end of their Pac-10 schedule, they'll be hosting the sixth-ranked UTEP Miners out of the Conference USA. And then week 15, they'll travel to take on the Idaho Vandals out of the WAC. So a lot of tough games here. I see at least four games where I just I have a feeling they're going to lose. So that's going to take their win total down to eight. But the San Diego and Northern Colorado games, those could go either way. Uh, it's just, it looks really, really rough for the Thunderbirds. And I think they're going to have a similar season uh, like last year. But, you know, 6-6 six and six heading into the bowl season. So I, I'm pretty sure they're just going to have the same exact kind of season. Hopefully they'll win the bowl game, though. But it's going to be intriguing to me to see how Nicholas Hall performs with that 82 overall. Uh, he's going to get half the snaps. Owen Gregory's going to get the other half. Um, so there's not going to be one definitive starter here for the Thunderbirds offense. But they do have Gregory. He's a sophomore. Um, he's going to be the leader of that offense. He's got the experience. He just needs to improve his numbers and improve his arm just a little bit would help this team. And maybe double-digit touchdown passes. That would be great. But for head coach, Noah Regeer, first season, I think it's going to be close to what he predicted. About a seven and five, a six and six season. Uh, it, the Pac-10 schedule is just crazy 
with the four subscriber versus subscriber matchups. That's going to be rough for Southern Utah. And I don't know if they're going to come out of that with more than one or two wins. But let me know in the comments section below or in Discord how many wins you think Southern Utah is going to have this season, guys. It's going to be very interesting. We have several brand new head coaches. And our next team that we're going to be taking a look at is UC Davis and head coach Jet Christie. I will see you guys with that one tomorrow. Take it easy, guys.